And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey folks, I'm Tom Vassell, and today we're taking a look at Houses of the Renaissance expansion. This is for Lorenzo del Magnifico. Now, Lorenzo del Magnifico is one of my favorite Euro games. It is a great worker placement game, and you're building a tableau of cards in front of you. You get some machines that you can run and get resources. There's various ways to victory. It's a really solid, excellently built game. And so I'm always excited when a game like that has an expansion. Let's take a look. Okay, so the first thing that this expansion adds is another player, another board, and pink. Now, I'm really glad they added the pink pieces. Actually, this is my color of choice when playing the game. But I already think that Lorenzo is quite well done with four players. I don't feel like we need to have a fifth player at all. Um, I think it makes the game too much long, too long, really. But hey. Uh, if you're looking for the fifth player, you have it, and if not, this is a really small part of the expansion anyway. A module that you can add are family tiles. Now, what these are, these are special tiles, and there's ten different tiles. So you put out tiles equal to the number of players, and you can put these tiles underneath them. You notice these tokens here. These are special tokens, and I want to talk about them because they're going to be kind of throughout this expansion. There are things that give you a special token. You'll take that token and get whatever it says on the other side like a military attack or a guy. There's three guys. And run your green cards at a value of three. So there's all different sorts of things that you can take here and you can save them and use them for later. Okay, with that being aside, the way these family tiles work is at the beginning of the game you're going to randomly pair each family tile with one of these resource boards. And each player is going to take one of their workers and they're going to essentially bid on how many resources you want to take at the beginning of the game and get that character tile. So let's say uh, yellow and blue place them there and green goes here. Then red might say, I'm willing to take fewer resources because I really want that special ability. And yellow says, fine, you can have it. Send a four player game and this would end. So you can outbid other people by saying you'll take fewer resources. These then replace your starting resources. Normally you have starting resources. These are gonna be different. This is, this is what you get now based on how you bid. Once you do that, you have that power for the rest of the game. Like I said, there are 10 different powers in the game, and each of them is extremely handy. This one here, every time you get a full set of all four colors, you get a reward. Take two leader cards, play a leader card for free, 10 points, 15 points. This one here, as much as you want, anytime you want, you can trade in military for two gold. Here, whenever you spend uh, resources to buy a yellow card, you put them on this, and whenever you take a privilege, you can take everything off of this. This one here just comes with an extra three worker who's not your color. So you can utilize him for different things. This one lets you play a seventh or eighth leader card. And every time that you play a leader, you're going to get one of those special tokens I showed you earlier. This lets you take any card on the board for seven workers. Um, th this one here... Uh, when you're playing leaders, when, uh, when, uh, oh, I'm sorry, this one here at the beginning of the game, you put two leader cards next to this. And if you win this family, you put one of them in your hand and the other you can play right away, which lets you start with a leader thing on turn one. This, every time you take a green card, you can run your green machine for one less than that green card. This one here, you're going to put three tiles on the faith track. And when you reach those tiles with your faith, you will get all the resources or points it shows on them. The negative thing about having this one is if you do not fulfill your faith requirements at the end of every other turn, you'll lose an extra five points. And this one, whenever you have to pay military for the purple card, you no longer. You still need to have the military, but you do not need to pay it. So you'll take these special abilities and you will have these in use for the entire game. This expansion also comes with an entirely new set of leaders, all sorts of leaders. There's a few different things, like this one here says you can have at most two of the special tokens, and you get at most one green card. And they're going to do just a variety of things for you as the game goes by. Um, here you can have at most one resource, but if you have eight gold and eight workers, you can play this leader. Um, every time you put a worker down, you're going to get an extra wood and stone. 
So this just adds more variety amongst the leaders. The negative thing about having this one there is that you're going to have to be looking at yet another sheet of all the different leaders that are in the game. There's also some other things. If you're playing with five players, you can add this new section to the board here so that for the turn order. Also, you'll notice that these new special tokens are one of the favors that you can take. But the biggest change here is going to be this new tower. We already had the four towers of the four colors, green, blue, yellow, and purple. Well, now, at the beginning of the game, you're going to go through these decks. This is for the new one. And in the original game, you have exactly eight cards of each. But here you have much more than that. So you're just going to shuffle them and take eight cards. And these will be different from game to game. And when you bring these out, you're not quite sure what colors they're going to be. And in fact, you can see here, they're all the colors. You know, there's not one of every color. I just put that out there to show you. They might be all of one color or not. And these are going to do various things. Like, for example, when you take this leader, you will instantly get to draw two of the leader cards in your hands. When, when you get this person, you'll instantly get one of those special tiles. And every time you place out a leader, you get another special tile. And this one here, you get immediately or get to go to the first place. Uh, whoever, whoever is the highest on the military track, you catch up to that person. And at the end of the game, it's worth five points. And there's all sorts of these cards that are going to do all sorts of yummy, delicious things. But you can't count on these cards coming out. You don't know which cards are going to come out because they're not all in any particular game. Now, because there are five towers now, it's a little easier to go to towers. Well, they know this. So in a four-player game, you're going to place this on one of these randomly. And what this is going to do is it's going to change the numbers. Instead of being 1, 3, 5, and 7, now it's 5, 6, 7, and 8. And every round of the game, this rotates over like this, just keeps moving. It never moves to the special tower. If you're playing with five players, you'll play with one that actually makes things cheaper, makes it easier. It's a 1, 2, 4, 6, just because it's going to be harder for people to get on the board. Those are basically the changes that are in this game. The components in this game are good. They're equal to the original game. You know, you have the, the pink stuff, and pink is a nice color. And these, you, I mean, you're going to have a problem with the, the families for the most part because you're going to have to remember what they do. It's symbology, but the whole game has been about symbology. Some are pretty easy, like this one. But they are pretty nice, and I like them. They fit nicely next to your board. My, there's a, a sheet that tells you what all the different families do. I have to say, I really wish someone would make a nice alphabetized leader sheet here. And because now you have new leaders and old leaders, you have to look at two sheets. I suppose you could just use one of the sheets if you wanted to. The rules themselves are pretty simple. They come like this. They show you how to play all the different things. It will tell you what you can add or not add to the game. At the end, it tells you all the new special development cards because there's a lot of new symbology things. A lot of things have to do with drawing leaders and working with the special towers and how the adaptation tower works when you have the new special tower in the game. So, like I said, it kind of fits in seamlessly. My only sadness is, is I have the very, 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 very nice uh, Meeple Realty insert, and this was not really made for that. I should also mention this game does come with some more resource um, because there's a fifth player now involved in the game, and it also comes with a few more of these tiles, the, uh, the Pope what the Pope requires tiles included with the game. Okay, so Lorenzo e Magnifico is a great game. This expansion is one of those must-have expansions for me. The House of the Renaissance, that's the main thing of the game, the new, I think, the new powers that you can have and the way that you bid on them, first of all, I think is a brilliant thing. I love to see that in more games. You're bidding on how many starting resources you will take. Well, that's pretty cool because I can sit there and go, all right, that special ability is really one I want, but I'm not willing to outbid that person. Or maybe I am. I'll take fewer resources to get an extra worker the whole game. Are you kidding? Really great concept. I will always play with them. And I'll probably always play with the fifth tower too. Um, the, the new special tower, it just gives you more options. And you look at those cards uh, and they, they, they're all different colors. You're like, oh, I want to go to green, but there's a green card over here. Just... It gives you oh, four more cards each round, and they're different each game, and I like that. It, it adds a little bit of complexity, not too much to the game. A few more choices, which again is why I think it's crazy to add a few more choices and a fifth player. Too long for my taste, but really that's just, it's just neat, and I like the special tokens. The special tokens are random, right? 
but and there's some actually some things that need special tokens to to run them but i i I don't mind that. I they're they're small randomness, and it's a randomness you can totally ignore. You cannot take special tokens. In fact, one of the new Pope's decrees, like you get one less special token every time you go to one of those spots. And I was like, eh, forget that. I don't need to go to that spot. I'll live without those special tokens in this particular game, which has always been a facet in Lorenzo. Is it okay to hobble yourself in one area to do well? And this game kind of promotes that more. Also, having more leaders is great. I really wish there was a single sheet with all the leaders on it explained it, which I could give to everybody as a player handout because that's a little bit of a pain passing those around, especially since they're still not alphabetical order, which seems odd to me. Um, but I like it. More stuff is always good. Don't need the fifth player, but everything else in this package I think is fantastic. Cool, like I said, I always play with the special abilities and the new tower. Why not? I even taught new players it and it works really well. Um, this game already is kind of a crunchy game, so if you can handle that, you'll be able to handle these little extra additions. And having my own special power, always on board with that. A great game, made even greater, Houses of Renaissance, highly, highly recommend it. Dice Tower Judgment, excellent! Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews, as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff, in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Would you please just shut the door? Yeah.